Hey guys, I wanted to make an updated video here on my experiences with the Nexus 6. Now I've had the device for over a month now, I used it exclusively over the Christmas period which is always a very heavy time for a device, at least for me. I use the camera a lot, I do a lot of video recording, I use uh, streaming a lot, I use YouTube a lot. So it's always a good time to test the device. Now. This isn't my full review for the Nexus 6, I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for that, I've had a few other things going on, I can say it will be coming very soon, although I don't have an exact date just yet, so bear with me on that one. But let's start off with the size. Now I realise the Nexus 6 is one of the biggest devices you can buy on the market today, but after using it and getting used to it for so long, I can honestly say that when I pick up the device, the size of it doesn't really come into my mind anymore, it really doesn't. It doesn't feel like a massive device when I pick it up, it feels normal and when I pick up for example a Galaxy S4 or one of my friends phones those phones just normal size I say normal size phones basically they feel too small which is I know kind of a crazy thing to say but after using the Nexus 6 for a while with its massive display those other phones they do feel too small for me which is insane even when I say it now it sounds insane but it's the honest truth now in terms of my usage patterns with the device, they have changed a little bit. I can use this device one-handed in certain scenarios, for example when I'm going through Android Central, or going through Twitter, reading websites, I can use that one-handed no problem. Where I have to use two hands is when I have to type, so when I have to type I have to bring my other hand over here and use my thumb to use the keyboard, both thumbs. I have kind of small hands so that's kind of expected, but I'm used to that usage pattern now, I don't think about it twice, it doesn't bug me at all. So I'm actually very happy with the size. The only time that I've noticed the phone feel big is when I had it in my slightly tighter than normal jeans, and I mean slightly tighter than normal, I don't mean skinny jeans, I don't wear those. But I was trying to get into a sports car which is obviously a little bit lower than normal cars and when I had to bend my leg to get in I could definitely feel the Nexus 6 in my pocket applying pressure to my leg so I had to take the Nexus 6 out and then sit in the car and it was absolutely fine. Other than that though I haven't noticed it being too big anyway. It doesn't feel big when you hold it up to your head, it doesn't feel big when you're carrying it in your pocket walking around town. The only time like I said that I felt it is when I had to get into a sports car so there you go, like I said, I'm completely used to the size now. So, if you're someone that was like me that wasn't completely sure on the size of the Nexus 6, I would definitely say, if you like everything else, if you're happy with the price and stuff like that, if the size is the only thing kind of in your way stopping you from buying it, I would definitely say give it a shot, you might like it like I have. I, I've kind of grown to like it, I wasn't sure about it at the beginning, but after using it now, it's absolutely fantastic, I can honestly say that. It feels great, That I love the design of the whole thing and it just fits the hand beautifully and the screen is beautiful once you get used to that size. Now let's actually talk about the screen a little bit here. So there's a lot of umming and ahhing about this screen when it came out. Of course it's an AMOLED screen, it has the Quad HD resolution which is 4 times 720p A lot of people say it's a waste, some people say it's not a waste. I can honestly say I don't see a big difference even any difference at all in terms of sharpness between the Nexus 6 display at Quad HD and my Nexus 5 display at 1080p. And when you actually look at the specs, that's actually not as big a shock as you might expect. The Nexus 6 has a PPI of around 493. The Nexus 5 has a PPI of around 445, so there's not actually that much difference in the pixels per inch because the Nexus 6 has a much bigger screen size, but what that's going to equal is not that much of a difference in terms of sharpness between those two devices. Now a lot of people say they should have put a 1080p display on this screen, but if you do that, you're going to be left with a pixel density of around 370, and that is quite a big difference, and in terms of Android phones, that's pretty much on the very low end of pixel densities. So really, for a phone this big, they were kind of stuck with having to use Quad HD, and I'm, I'm happy they did. I've, I've had absolutely no problems with performance, no problems with stuttering or anything like that, any lag. It's, it's very fast for me. I'm actually using Franco Kernel at the moment, and it's still lightning quick. There's no problems with it whatsoever. I am still encrypted as well, so that's not been an issue for me. But yeah, in terms of sharpness, honestly, I can't see much of a difference between you know this display and a 1080p display. Now, I've had a lot of questions about screen burning, and I can honestly say I can't see any on my device, but it is an AMOLED display, and all AMOLED displays are prone to screen burning. That's just the nature of the display. So if you do leave a still image on your device for an extended period of time, 
you will likely see some screen burning, which is when the image actually retains on the screen. And even if you change the screen or you open a different app, that same image can be kind of seen in the background kind of ghosting in. Now, I actually use my device a little bit differently. You can see I don't have the permanent software keys on the bottom, the permanent nav bar. I turn that off and I use Pi Navigation. So for me, that's one less thing that can burn in. So I haven't seen any screen burning on my Nexus 6, but of course, because it's an AMOLED device, it is definitely possible. So just be aware of that. Next up, we've got the camera. Now, Google, you know, they, they were trying to concentrate on the camera here. It's a 13 megapixel camera. And how can I put it? It's, it's decent. I wouldn't say it's exceptional. I wouldn't say it's a potato or anything like that. It's decent. Now, if I open up the camera application, I actually think the sensor is a pretty good sensor, but I do think the software, the Google software here, lets it down. The focusing isn't that great. It kind of pulse focuses when you're using the video, which is kind of annoying. And as you can see right here, I use HDR plus mode the entire time because it just takes much better pictures it uses better dynamic range it just has better contrast everything looks better with hdr plus on the nexus 6 camera so i use it all the time the normal mode just kind of dulls out the picture and makes it a little lifeless um, of course with hdr plus you do have that processing time which you can see here so that's the one downside of it there is a delay and if you're trying to take a you know a quick shot of your kid or something like that it's going to be a struggle you can see it then has to process a little bit more but the end result is the shot just looks a lot better than if you were to take it normally but it's going to depend on exactly what scene you're taking um, in general i'm absolutely fine with the camera i've never been massive fan of cameras i've never really used cameras that much on my devices but the Nexus 6 camera I'm absolutely fine with it takes decent shots at the end of the day for me it's still a smartphone camera it's not going to be as good as an, you know a DSLR or anything like that so that's just my opinion on smartphone cameras in general um, now of course we do have front facing speakers on the Nexus 6 I absolutely adore these speakers I can listen to YouTube videos I can listen to Twitch without plugging in headphones even with having the TV on in the same room you can hear the speakers absolutely brilliantly on the Nexus 6 no problems there I love front facing speakers it will be hard to go back to a device without them that's what I'm going to say and yeah lastly we'll talk about the battery life now, battery life for me really hasn't changed since the first few days that I've used the device. I still get around a day and a half total time off charger, and I still get around four to five hours screen on time pretty much every every day and a half. That's just my usage, that's what I get. It has actually changed the way I charge my device as well. So I don't charge my Nexus 6 overnight anymore like I've done with my previous four or five devices. I used to plug them in at night and charge them all night until the morning. I don't do that with my Nexus 6 because by the time I go to bed, it has about 30 to 40%. So I leave it at that. I go to bed with 30, 40%. I wake up with about, you know, 25 or 35% left. I then plug it in for about 40 minutes and I'm up to about 80 or 90%. I unplug it again and I'm good for another day and a half. So instead of charging this device for eight or nine hours like my previous devices, I only have to charge it for around 40 minutes when I wake up and I'm good to go. So it's definitely changed my usage patterns there thanks to the battery life and thanks to the turbo charging. Now, I realize it's not as good battery life as something like the OnePlus One, but as always, it depends on usage, guys. Some people might get rubbish battery life on it. Some people might get exceptional battery life on it. That's just the way battery life goes with any mobile devices anywhere. So. Uh, that's just something you're going to have to live with. Now, yeah, what else can I say about it? I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy with the Nexus 6. It's definitely one of the best Nexus, probably the best Nexus I've ever used. I haven't installed a custom ROM on it or anything like that. The only reason I installed Franco Kernel wasn't because of battery life problems or performance issues. It was because I wanted to change the RGB because I wanted a slightly cooler screen than what they give you. Although. You know, I would have been actually quite happy with the uh, normal default colors, but because I could change it, I decided that I wanted to change it. It's kind of one of those deals. In terms of the software, obviously it's running Lollipop. Lollipop does have some bugs, nothing absolutely show-stopping, but some stuff that does need to be fixed. For example, there are a fair few people experiencing this, including me on, uh, on XDA, and it's kind of a weird one to track down, but if you turn off, or for me, turn on adaptive brightness or adapted display if you don't have them both on at least in my case if I turn one of them off you get this weird wake clock that sometimes will keep your device awake for hours on end 
And the only way I've managed to stop that wake clock is to turn them both on and that wake clock just doesn't come back. So there's definitely a bug there. It's called, it's called sensor underscore IND if you ever get that wake clock. I've had that problem and the only way I could fix it was to turn them both on and it's fine now. So it's a really weird issue. Hopefully Google will fix that very soon. There is also a memory leak bug in Lollipop that some people are suffering from that slows down your device over a period of time and only a reboot fixes it. So that's kind of an, another annoying bug from Google that really does need to be addressed as soon as possible. Hopefully we'll see that fix this month, although it's coming to the end of it. I've kind of rambled on a little bit here. Yeah, I've actually rambled on for 10 minutes. So uh, sorry about that. But yeah, that's my kind of updated video on my experiences with the Nexus 6 guys. As I said before, the update, the uh, full review will be coming very soon. Stay tuned for that one, guys. Peace out.